Tonight we're starting off talking about hydropower, you know, dams. If you've watched any TV in the Portland area or much of Washington state, you've no doubt seen ads recently that are supportive of the dams. Why is it important to protect Northwest hydropower? Hydropower is essential to address climate change and protect salmon. 90% of the renewable energy we generate in the Pacific Northwest is from hydropower. The Lower Snake River dams kept the power on during last year's heat wave. The only way to replace the reliability would be burning more fossil fuels. Well, some of you have asked us about these. Kyle wrote in to say some entity or person are spending quite a bit of money advertising the dams on our rivers close by. Northwest River Keepers or some such outfit. So really, who are they? Why are they stirring this up just now? And who, who is financing this and to what end? Thanks for your questions, Kyle. We have the answers. You were close, but not exact on the name. It's Northwest River Partners. That's the group that represents smaller electric companies all over Oregon and Washington state. They even have a few in Montana. They do want to keep the dams going, and those are the folks who are paying for these ads. Kyle also pointed out that the ads leave out the fact that the dams kill lots of salmon as they try to swim past. Yes, we'll get to that in a bit. Let's start by showing you the area we're talking about. It involves what's known as the Lower Snake River Dams. Those dams are on the Snake River in southeast Washington just above the northeast part of Oregon and not far from where the snake flows into the Columbia River. The Army Corps of Engineers built the four dams in the 1960s and 70s. That's where the battle is now focused. It's over whether those dams should be protected or torn down to save wild salmon. Environmentalists and many others want the dams torn down. They argue the dams turned the Snake River into a series of shallow, warm lakes, which has nearly destroyed the entire population of wild steelhead and salmon there. And the concern's not just isolated to that area. Many have argued dwindling salmon runs threaten the orcas all the way out to the Pacific Sound and elsewhere. The southern resident orcas, one of the most iconic species we have here in the Northwest, uh, pretty much only eat salmon. 80% uh, of their diet is just Chinook salmon. And so when the salmon die, the orca die. The orcas are out there in Puget Sound. So it is a big issue. On the other hand, supporters point out that the dams provide low cost, clean, dependable power, enough to run about 800,000 homes for a year. Many are around the Tri-Cities area of Washington. And they argue that especially now with our region moving from reliable but dirty coal plants to clean but less reliable solar and wind power, that the dams are more important than ever. Okay, got that? That's the context now for our discussion tonight. I interviewed Kurt Miller, the executive director of Northwest River Partners, which wants to protect the dams. And again, they're the group behind the ads you're seeing on TV. I also found an excellent article about this in the Seattle Times, which pointed out that polling by the group found support for dams has fallen significantly in just six years. This slide, which Northwest River Partners was nice enough to send me, shows the problem. Their polling found that when asked if hydropower is renewable back in 2007 on the left side of your screen, 86% of people said yes. And in 2021, it had fallen to just 56%. Here's another even more ominous trend for the group. The top green line shows a drop from 66% to 47% of people who agree with the statement, removing the dams is an extreme solution that could do more harm than good. So fewer people consider removing the dams extreme. And the bottom red line shows growing support from 12% to 29% for the statement, we should remove the dams to protect animals and their habitat. Are you also concerned that uh, public sentiment behind breaching the dams is growing. I think the Times report uh, cited a number like from 12% used to support it, and now more like 29% support it. Yeah, I think that um, I think that one of the reasons we really felt we needed to do this campaign is that there's been there really haven't been campaigns like this to to promote you know hydropower or to kind of save the dams. And so a lot of the argument has occur occurred kind of on the other side, kind of in a vacuum, you know, uh, you know, the, the proponents who have run campaigns for years to try to, uh, you know, kind of anti hydropower campaigns or anti lower snake river dam campaigns, you know, they've been able to have that space uh, because they've been investing in uh, investing in those campaigns. But our data show one thing that the, the, the PowerPoint didn't uh, didn't disclose our data showed that the more people know about hydropower, the more they support it. 
because of the things I did, the things that we talked about, the ability of hydropower to essentially help fill in the gaps for wind and solar power when they're not available to provide reliability in a carbon free way. Once people understand how important that is to keeping the grid safe and reliable and affordable, we end up getting a lot of support. And so our polling definitely shows that, that the more people know about it, the more they support it. And so we knew this was an important time for us to get that message out there. And just a reminder, we're not taking sides here. We're just explaining what generated this ad campaign. The group launched the campaign to raise as much as $6 million to get their side out to you. Part of the reason they're pushing the message now is Governor Jay Inslee from Washington State and Senator Patty Murray launched a study late last year to take a look at tearing down the dams to save salmon and whether it, there would be a reasonable way to replace the lost electricity once the dams are gone. Well, early last month, their draft report found the dams could be torn down, but the cost of replacing that electricity through other methods would run between 10 and $27 billion. Yes, that is billion with a B. Northwest River Partners hired a consultant to estimate the cost themselves. It came out much higher, as high as $142 billion. I guess what really spurred it, though, uh, to, to answer your question, wasn't those polling numbers that you and I have been discussing, but it was when Senator Murray and Governor Inslee announced in October uh, 22nd, I believe, uh, that they wanted to start a process to look at whether or not they thought the services provided by the Lower Snake River dams can be replaced. And that, that's a really serious uh, question. And, you know, at the end of this process, they're going to make a recommendation. And we were really concerned that they would make this recommendation without people even being aware of what was at risk. So for me, the real driver was like, I, people need to know this stuff because it's going to affect their electricity bills. It's going to affect whether or not this region can achieve its zero carbon goals. Uh, and it's even going to potentially affect public safety. And so for me, I felt like it was our you know, our complete responsibility to get out there and make sure that we raise awareness on this important issue. The final report is due out sometime between now and the end of summer, which is why you're seeing the ads right now and you're probably going to keep seeing them for a while. And you're, help, you're hoping to galvanize public opinion so that if they do come out and recommend breaching, that there's strong pushback from people who understand the value? Yeah, I, I think both. I mean, I, we want people to reach out to them before they make a recommendation so that people, you know, so they're aware of that their constituencies from all across the Northwest really, uh, really value what these dams do for the region. Um, and, and yeah, you know, at the end of the day, um, the, and the Murray Inslee team has been clear, the dams can only come out, they can or be breached. Um, uh, with, uh, if Congress votes to do that, if, if the U.S. Congress, because the dams are federally owned and operated, they were authorized by Congress, so it would take an act of Congress to uh, to remove them. Uh, so yeah, it's really cynical, important. But it, it doesn't seem like Congress can do much of anything right now. That I have no com. I have no comment on that. Yeah, but that, yeah, <laughs> it would definitely be in your favor, I think. Uh, I mean, um, you know, I you know my my belief is that. Congress will not uh, vote to do that, but I, uh, but you know, we believe it's an important enough issue. We want people to um, to reach out and, and make sure it doesn't happen. One other thing: earlier this week, the White House issued two reports on the dams. One looked at what it would take to restore healthy runs of salmon and steelhead on the Lower Snake River. The conclusion suggested, among other things, tearing down one or more of those dams. The second report found that replacing the electricity produced by the dams is possible and would cost between 11 and 19 billion dollars. So to sum it all up, the reason you're seeing these ads supporting the dams on the Lower Snake River is because there is a growing movement to tear them down. The side arguing to keep them says they provide valuable electricity that we can count on, which is especially needed as the region moves away from coal-fired electric plants. The side arguing to tear them down says that electricity can be replaced. Yes, it comes at a cost, but that it's well worth it to restore the native fish runs on the Snake and Columbia River. So there's a lot there. What's your take on all this? What do you think about it? You agree, you disagree? Send me an email. Our address is the story at kgw.com or call and leave a voicemail 503-226-5090.